Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the stream. Thank you guys very much for being here. Marlena, Dustin, Katie, Steven, Tewin, Lael. Good morning, guys. Uh, we are going to go north of town. I have to go after the Satyr that I forgot to grab yesterday for the Ancient Moonstone Seal. Uh, we're also looking for Strider meat. Probably find some on the way. Uh, I'm going to pop some potions here before I forget. And for whatever reason, the music seems really, really quiet here today. Let's see what's going on. 90%, 90%, that looks normal. Okay, is it my headphones? No, no, headphones are good. Let me know if everything's a little quiet today. The music in this zone, like, in particular, just seems really quiet. Uh, that's fine, what else? Okay. I, I like that he just fell over. I was assuming he would come back, but... Falling over due to bleed damage, that'll work too. Katie, I'm glad I could help with that. Thank <laughs> you. 
Well, that was nice. We got it on the first kill. I hope the rest of the day goes just like that. Alright, so this one is now going to send us back down to the south. I was here yesterday and I I didn't have this quest yet, so we have to go back down there, which is okay because we have multiple beach sea creatures to grab. Uh, what else? We also have to investigate the furball camp in this area. As far as doing stuff up here to the north, we do have the cave mushroom quest. I think I'm going to hold off on this one until later. We'll probably do Dark Shore in like two different visits. Although I am going to run over here and grab this uh, level 13 sea creature. This one we can hold off on until we're doing stuff further up this way. How do I like the professions that I've chose for money making? Would I change would I change either of them? Uh well I'm kinda lazy and I don't do production professions well. So like for me, leatherworking and herbalism is better even if I'm just gonna vendor stuff. As far as if it's worth making money, it's really gonna depend on on the server. It's gonna depend on the economy. It, it doesn't feel like you start making a lot of money off of herbalism or or skinning until you're like a little bit later on. Like maybe until you're around like medium leather, heavy leather, and thick leather. And then herbs, I have no idea. Herbs always seem like they're like super cheap on the auction house. But yeah, the, the main reason I just take gathering stuff is that I, I know I'm not going to keep up on uh, production professions. I've been proven to be very bad at that. Primordial, Camp Spidey, Devin, good morning guys. Welcome to the stream. And thanks for being here. Yeah, on, on Hardcore you often don't live long enough to really worry about it. <laughs> the, at least that's been my experience. Obviously there, there are plenty of people that make it all the way to 60, but uh, I haven't done that yet. Alright, we'll grab that one. Hobo, good morning to you. Welcome to the stream. Yeah, I've always been bad with at the production professions too. You know, the only ones I'm really good at, tailoring. I can level up tailoring, typically. And sometimes I have mixed success with leatherworking. If I can do leatherworking and skinning, I can I can definitely keep leatherworking going a lot further than I can keep like engineering or blacksmithing going. But ultimately I'm just really bad at it. And I can never tell if I actually enjoy doing it. Like, the gathering stuff I enjoy because you can do it on the way, it kind of it kind of has you like explore into like the nooks and crannies of the zones to go after herbs and stuff like that. So the gathering stuff I like, I, I know that I enjoy it. 
I, I just am not sure that I enjoy production professions. I would enjoy it a lot more if I could tell the system, hey, make 20 of these, and then I can click one button, and it would cast one time, it, it, it would make all of them. The tediousness is kind of like the hard part for me. Like making 20, 30, 40 of the same item and having to wait for the cast bar every single item. Like, I understand that back when the game was made, it, it probably had to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way anymore, and a big part of me wishes that it weren't. Wolfar, good afternoon, buddy. It's going okay so far. Is it a Stanley mug? It's a Yeti mug. And it works pretty well. What brings you Typically here? keeps my coffee hot for up to six hours. Not that my coffee ever lasts for six hours, but in the rare event that I like forget about it, leave it somewhere. When I come back to it, it's still it's still hot. May the stars guide you. The only annoying part about it is that it has like a moving piece on the on the lid so like if you don't take the lid completely apart every single day and thoroughly clean it every single day it gets like gunk build up is the best way to describe it and it has like six parts to it that have to come apart so it's just like a little bit of an annoyance to clean it and that's my only complaint I wish I had one with a non-moving lid for home and, a, and like the moving closing lid for the car. Or just like a, the same mug but a different lid. I wish I had just kind of like an open-lipped lid for home that I could use and then if I needed to take it in the car then I could put the one that closes. That would be ideal. But in, instead if I wanted a different style of lid I'd have to buy an entirely different mug. And these are not very cheap. Yeah, it makes you make sure that it's clean, or you don't. And then one day you look at it closely, and you deeply regret your life. Not that that's ever happened to me. How's the draft farm going? It's going well, JC. Yeah, it's going good. Thanks for being here. Jason, you think you can buy different lids for these? I'll, I'll, I'll take a look. I, I haven't seen it, like, really, but then again, I, I haven't ex exactly looked for just lids. It would be nice if you could. But I feel like it's an easy way to get like another 60 bucks out of, out of a person. Oh, you want a different lid? Buy a different model of mug. It has a different lid.
All right, so we need to make our way back into the ruins so that I can destroy the seal. Since we didn't get that done yesterday. And then after that, we will cut across the way. We will grab these uh, lower level sea creatures. Uh, I don't know if I'll go after Merc Deep. Did I grab the Merc Deep quest? I didn't grab the Merc Deep quest, so I guess that settles that. We won't be going after Merc Deep. Uh, we do have to come over here on the way back and get the red crystal. And then we'll see where we stand. If if we clear all of the green quest, I may choose to go back to Westfall. Uh, things are starting to turn green back there. It'd be nice to get the cooking quest done, but it's a it's a low drop rate on the meat off the striders. I don't really know where this thing is at. I thought it was something kind of like this, but I don't think this is it. No, that has a campfire. The thing we're looking for has like a little altar. Like a waist high altar. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's down here to the south of us. Blood Moon, good morning. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for sending along the uh, the potions. I really appreciate it. Here it is, right here. Look at that. Who needs quest tracking? Not this guy. Raz, good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. That is a look I have not seen before. That's pretty cool. I, I've never seen this one. Daniel, good afternoon. Welcome. It looks like a horde chess piece. Yeah, I was thinking this looks like the Torin, like the Torin starting chess piece, doesn't it? That's what it looks like. It looks like we just took it off a Torin and resized it. It's kind of sad yet wonderful that Vanilla Era had the best looking leveling gear. The leveling gear in like pretty much every other expansion was really boring. Like ever since the Cataclysm revamp where they came in and they put like the Cataclysm style sets in and stuff. The leveling gear has always been boring. In most expansions when you level to level cap there's one set of gear for each type of armor and they just give you like recolors of it as you go. The only place you can find like truly unique gear is like back in vanilla era leveling. 
where you just get like random off the wall stuff like that. All right, I'm going to run all the way down here so that we can get both of these sea turtles. We'll cut back north, we'll investigate the red crystal, and then we'll turn everything in back in town. Even the gear and wrath of the Lich King started to look really boring, to be honest. Yeah, they were just like, everything was just a full skin suit, nothing really had like any character. It's just, it just all kind of, no, nothing was, you know, nothing was like super unique. Nothing was ever going to show this much skin ever, ever again. <laughs> you can't find anything like this, like past Burning Crusade, basically. You know, some of the TBC clown outfits were okay because they had different cuts, different styles, and stuff like that. Like, the colors were not, like, amazing. Like, pink and fluorescent blue and stuff like that. Like, the colors weren't amazing, but some of the styles were okay. Whereas, by the time you get to Wrath of the Lich King, like, all the colors and all the styles are actually pretty boring. Until you get into, like, tier sets and stuff. Like, they did make some good gear. But it was mainly, like, the only gear that looked any good was, like, some of the best gear you'd ever get. And then Cataclysm came through and they, they changed a lot of the quest reward items and the looks of the items you get while leveling through the classic zones. So at that point I feel like we lost a lot of like the originality that the vanilla gear had. I still haven't trained axes. No, Eric, I haven't been back in Ironforge yet. We'll be heading back that way today. We're gonna finish up all the green quests. I'm hoping to even get this one done, even though the drop rate's pretty inconsistent. We'll finish up all the green quests, and then we'll be heading back to Eastern Kingdoms. So we'll, we'll get it soon, TM. I also really need to get a ranged weapon. It would be nice to be able to pull these guys out a little bit. Well, this is not great. We missed a couple of times. There we go. Yeah, we really needed the crit. What we didn't need was we didn't need him running away and getting help. So this might end up being... Yeah, this is not gonna... Not gonna go really well for us. Uh, let's try to kill him. And then maybe we run away. No, we're not running anywhere. 
Okay, uh, in that case, I don't know. We need a couple of good crits, so we need a couple of dodges. We need, we need, no, we're, 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 we're screwed now. <laughs> we needed a couple more things to go our way. Uh, including them not running and pulling more and more and more and more ads. I really would like to kill this guy, though. Like, this guy needs to bleed out somewhere. Oh, shit. Okay, well, we would have been okay, probably, had I not aggroed this bear. Oh, it's gonna be like a 15-minute run from wherever the graveyard is. Oh, that's- yeah, that's not too bad. There must be two different graveyards in this zone for, the, for there to be one so far to the south like this. It's not too bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, it's not- I, I'm like... I'm relieved to not have to care if I die or not. It's been nice. Like, the, mo the more I die, the better I feel. It's been cathartic to get killed over and over and over and over again and just be able to respawn and run back to my body. Zero consequences, zero emotions. Maybe like a momentary twinge of annoyance. But really hardly even that. After 10 months of hardcore, like... It's pleasant. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a, a spirit run here somewhere, like where you die, like right here, and no matter what, you have a big, big run. I'm, I'm sure of it. Because the other graveyard's probably... well, the other graveyard could be close to town, or it could be all the way up here. I really don't know where it is. Uh, and I'm not tracking it on my map right now. What really sucks is I just popped all those potions. That's the only real bummer. Yeah, it was a pretty short one. Ali, good afternoon, man. Thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. Oh, he's got a big heal. I'm doing good today. Thanks for asking. I guess I have to get all the way inside its ribcage to click on the actual clickable part.
If we can find one more Moonstalker that drops a Fang while we're down here, that would be ideal. I had a feeling I had a talent point that I hadn't spent. Let's pop that into Unbridled Wrath. Alex, good morning, man. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here. You know, there was actually some pretty big sad news yesterday that hadn't come out yet while we were hanging out in the stream. Uh, they put up a, uh, a features video, I think a couple hours after the st our stream ended. It's pretty, some pretty interesting stuff. Actually addressing some of the stuff I had just talked about in my complaints video. <laughs> So that was cool. The inclusion of the PvE stuff, that was like a big ask of mine, just just giving people something to log in and do, besides like doing the raid, doing the PvP. That was nice. I'm really, I'm really happy that there is not a new PvP zone, although I'm not happy that Stranglethorn is still gonna be ruined. Because they're going to continue the PvP event in Stranglethorn, so like you're still not going to be able to quest in Stranglethorn. I have all of those Stranglethorn quests that are all green and like ripe for the questing, and I'm still not going to be able to do them. Instead, it seems like I'm going to be jumping through those four Emerald uh, Dream Portals all day long and grinding up on the enemies within the Emerald Dream Portals to level up. Because they said you'll be earning reputation while you're in there, so like if I'm earning reputation while I'm in there, and if it's a way to level up, then I kind of have to do that, otherwise I'm missing out on reputation. I'm excited to see the PvE thing. Like, the, PV, the PvE world thing is, is something that I asked for, like, you know, I talked about maybe it would be world quest, maybe it would be daily quest, but something for players to do besides, like, raid, PvP, and quest. So I, that's the one thing that I'm really excited to see what they do with it. I, I think that's going to be pretty cool. I, I do think it's probably going to like force people to go in there and just level up. Like I think a lot of people might end up leveling 40 to 50 within those portals. It said they were repeatable content. Uh, they they progress a, a new a new reputation, so people are going to want rep with that new faction. And then also there are like rewards you can purchase off the vendor. So I, I feel like that it might push like everybody into that content. We'll see how it goes. It's nice to see that they're trying different stuff, that, that every phase was not just, uh, here's a raid, here's a PvP event, here's a raid, here's a PvP event. It's nice to see them work in some actual PvE stuff. Now we have to hope that it's fun. Also happy to see they're just offering the experience bonus right away. Like 40 to 50, you're automatically going to have a 50% XP buff. To me, offering it right away is much better than like offering it two weeks into the phase and invalidating the time that the other people spent leveling before you pushed out a surprise XP buff. 
So I, I think that's a good choice. I don't particularly think that 40 to 50 needs an XP bonus, but if they're going to put one in, I'd rather they put it in right away. And not spring it on people later. You think they'll up it to 100 two weeks later? Yeah, they might. They might. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Maybe that will happen. It's only it's only 10 levels, and so with a 50 with a 50 percent bonus, it shouldn't take people very long to level up. Especially if like if like I said, if they have these like little PVE events set up so that people can go into those portals and grind on stuff, um, then they get to control how much XP that gives, and then like maybe that's a quick way to level up a character. I don't know. People are probably going to do the same thing they did in Phase 2. They're, they're going to grind out the Nomergon raid for XP. And then they'll probably grind on dungeons for XP. But it would be cool if for solo players, if the, if the Emerald Dream portals or whatever they are, if those were a way to grind levels. Since we're still not going to be able to quest in Stranglethorn, it would be nice to have an alternative to questing, I guess. Yeah, Wolfheart, you're not wrong to feel that way, man. Like, that's a, that's an acceptable feeling to have. I, I talk about it a little bit in my in my thoughts video I put up the other day that I, I would rather them just have like a consistent 40% XP buff that goes the whole way through without capped leveling. I feel like Season of Mastery leveling was really good. Season of Mastery leveling was good for me. Like, you didn't, you didn't out-level zones. You still had to do zone hopping. Uh, but it prevented, it prevented level 30, 40 fatigue. So, and, and you know, that started with, I believe it was a 40% XP buff. So that's how I would do it. I would, I would not have had level caps. I would have had a 40% XP buff all the way to level cap from the beginning. I never would, I would never increase it. It would stay 40% for the whole season. And that would be like a good balance. Buffalo Bill, good afternoon, man. Welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here. You can turn it off. People always say that they're like, well, you can turn it off. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I could shoot myself in the foot too, but I'm not about to do it. I'm not, I'm not going to shoot myself in the foot to like create artificial difficulty that doesn't exist for anybody else. Like, yeah, you can turn it off or you could just go play a different version of the game. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you can come back and play vanilla era. Like, you don't have to, if you want the journey, like sod is not for you. That's, that's kind of what we're learning. Like sod is, sod is not about the journey. I think once we once we can agree on that, it's easier to have a conversation about if it's good or bad. The first thing you have to consider is that it's not about the journey. It, it can't possibly be about the journey when they're stopping your journey every so often and giving you a level cap raid to grind for for two months. You know, it can't be about the journey. So once we allow once we allow for the fact that it's not about the journey, if a journey is what you really want and you really want a long journey, you can come play vanilla era and then you can have your long journey. It's you know, that's really that's really what you have to do. Is it about the meta? Oh, it's all about the meta. <laughs> Go watch my video. It tells you I'll tell you all about how I feel about it. Yeah, I just put up a thoughts video. Yeah, I put up a thoughts video hours before they revealed like their phase 3 preview video. Which is really funny. To be fair, I was I was kind of late in, in delivering my thoughts about the season. I, I probably could have made this video weeks and weeks ago and it would have been the same. Uh, I keep forgetting to go out and explore the red crystal because I'm not tracking my objectives, so let's run out and do that really fast while I'm thinking about it.
This might be an interesting one to find without quest tracking. I, I don't know how. I think I've only done this like once without questy. It, it's somewhere in this area. And we should find like a little ramp to lead up to it. Do I remember rested XP? You mean the rested XP add-on? Or actual rested XP? In either case, the answer is no. I, 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 I never forget. Uh, I feel like it's right back here somewhere. Oh, uh, no, maybe not. Maybe not. That looks a little bit steep. The add-on. Oh yeah, the add-on's still around. I'm sure there are still people that use it, pay for it, etc. But, you know, there are some people that still pay for the rested XP add-on, and there are some adults that don't know how to tie their shoes. So, it's... It is what it is. Sometimes a thing is too hard for someone, and so they, they seek an alternative. I swear it's around here somewhere. Maybe, maybe I've already passed it. And now that now that comment being said about people that can't tie their shoes, I, I saw these these sketchers that are like slip-ins. And I, and I really want a pair, <laughs> but they're really expensive. I want them for like house shoes that I can just wear around the house because I, I, I don't go barefoot around the house. So yeah, speaking of not being able to tie your shoes, I really do want these shoes that you don't have to tie. I don't, I don't like wearing socks in the house. Now, because if, if you have hardwood and stuff, then it, it's like slippery. In like an emergency situation, like I want to be able to go outside quickly if I have to. Like I don't want to have a situation where I where I have to get outside quickly, uh, and I and I don't have shoes on. So like I I just don't. I, I wear like shoes in the house that are meant to be worn just in the house, and I don't I don't go barefoot. And then a lot of times, like in, in the winter, my office is cold. So if I if I don't have shoes on down here, my toes will get cold. It's it's a mess. It's better just to wear shoes. I'm not, I'm not a flip flop kind of person. I'm barely a slip on kind of person. But for house shoes, like, slip-ons are preferable. Yeah, one day I want to train the mitochondria in my feet to be able to handle anything barefoot. That'd be fun. There used to be this survival show back in the day on the Discovery Channel. Where, like, one of the guys would go barefoot, and no matter, like, what environment they dropped him in, it was, like, two dudes. One was a military guy, and one was, like, a buff hippie. And like whatever environment they dropped them in, the dude never wore shoes. He was always barefoot. And he had trained himself like for years and years and years in different environments to go barefoot. It was actually pretty incredible. People run faster barefoot. It doesn't surprise me. I'm like, like human beings were built to be barefoot, we know. We were migratory animals that probably walked like thousands and thousands of miles barefoot like in our lives. We were basically created to walk. That was like, that. it seems to be like our main physical function is literally to ambulate. 
we don't have a lot of other things that we're like super good at. We're we're good we're good at hitting shit with other shit that we project from us. Like we're good at we're good at aiming. We have natural talents at aiming, and we have natural talents at walking. And besides that, like we don't got a lot going on for us, like biologically, besides our giant massive brains. Uh, what is upstairs here? Uh, the Tower of Athlax. I don't really need to do that yet. Dual survival, that's what it was called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What brings you here? Be careful. My inventory is full. How did that happen? I must have been fighting a lot of stuff. I emptied my inventory pretty good this morning. Oh, that's a nice cloak. Agility Spirit. I don't really need agility a lot, but it's Agility Spirit, so I'll take it. Uh, let's sell everything we can. I'm in full vendoring mode now, so like I'm vendoring basically like everything. I, w I see, this is why I, 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 I wish I could do classic transmog. This chest piece is awesome. It fits the rest of our gear. I wish I could have classic era transmog sometimes. It's probably like a blasphemous thing to say, but... How many tunes have I run? 7,336. I am honored. A loon light your path. A shaft a laugh. How many times have you typed words? That's my question. How many slices of bread have I eaten? That's a great question. I'll get I'll be right back to you. I'll get right back to you on that. Let me, I'll have somebody count and then I'll let you know. How many to max level? I will check on that and then I will let you know. I'll get back to you. I, I gotta check the files. How many times have I had wild burnout? Um, two different times that I can distinctly remember. Yeah, I, I had burnout pretty bad in uh, when Mist started. Well, that might have been the only time it was really burnout. I've, I've taken breaks that were not because of burnout, but definitely Mist. Mist, Mist of Pandaria, I got burnout. Uh, I got burnout at a time in my life when I didn't really understand like what burnout was or how it affected people. Yeah, so that happened. Uh, me and my friend had power leveled pandas, like a tank and a healer. We power leveled them up, leveled as fast as we could, as quick as we could. We were doing some kind of like holiday event or like a single off boss for like a trinket or something. We were doing it over and over and over and over again. I was having a shit time healing it because we were in crappy gear and I had just leveled this character to cap and we'd played like hundreds of hours consecutively in like a small amount of time. It was... I, I burned out. I think I think I quit the game like mid-fight. 
logged out and I don't think I logged back in until uh, until Warlords of Draenor came out. Uh, should I grab any of this other stuff? I don't think so. I, I kind of want to head back to the Eastern Kingdoms now. However, this one is still, this is still green, so we might have to do this. As water cascades... Uh, what is this? This is the, the red crystal again. So yeah, I think we have to finish up just these green ones before we take off. Eric, is it weird that one of your daughter's favorite snacks is a plain slice of bread? No, that's awesome. You, you should like definitely like embrace that. <laughs> as long as it's not like wonder bread, you know, as long as it's like a real piece of bread. Bread, bread is life. Just get around the medieval like bread, cheese, bread, cheese and water diet. She rolls them into bread balls. That's great. That's awesome. I, I sometimes when I when I when I feed my small dog a little bit of bread because my my small dog he also likes bread. It's weird. Uh, I will I will roll the bread into a little bread ball for him. I know you shouldn't you shouldn't feed your dogs human food. I definitely understand, but he has a taste for the bread. His favorite is rye and pumpernickel. And yeah, I do I do that for my I roll them into little bread balls. <laughs> the whiter the bread, the faster you did. Yeah, I mean, back when they first started making, like, Wonder Bread and stuff, it was it didn't have any vitamins in it. So, like, people were developing, like, massive B vitamin deficiencies and stuff all across the country because the bread they were eating, for the most part, had no nutritional value. These days, they, like, zap it with vitamins, so they, they, they put some vitamins into it artificially. So, like, these days, it's a little better, but it's still not great. White bread's still not great for you. Yeah, there's, there's very few things my dog won't eat. Bananas, he doesn't, he doesn't like bananas. He won't, he won't eat, like, if I, if I give him a piece of banana, he'll just, like, stare at it and push it around. I don't know why. Maybe it's, like, the texture of it. Someone's gonna yell at me in the YouTube comments for feeding my my animals all these different human foods. They're gonna, it's gonna be like a long lecture about how it's not healthy for them. Like, I already know that, so... You can spare me. Because I already know. But he, he's like, he tries to be so cute when he begs for food, it's like, it's hard to resist him. And then of course now, now it's like part of his routine, like if I'm eating a little bit of food, he, he expects to have a tiny bite of that food at some point, no matter what it is. Like, if I'm eating some goldfish, he, he wants- I gotta give him at least one goldfish before I'm all done. Otherwise, he just looks at me so accusingly, like, how dare I not share my food with him. Do I have a favorite workout food? If you had asked me that question in, like, my, my late 20s, early 30s, I might have. But these days, though, like, I don't- I don't really pay much attention to my diet. <laughs> Back in the day, I was like trying to eat like 3,000 calories a day, like double my amount of uh, my amount of weight in grams of protein a day. Like these days, I don't care. I'm too I'm too old to care these days. What's a goldfish? Pepperidge Farms. Pepperidge Farms. Uh, a goldfish. It's a salty, cheesy little goldfish treat. They they are shaped like fish, and they have little smiley faces, and they are cheesy and salty and delicious. No, I wasn't eating. Yeah, 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 I guess I could be confused. I was just eating live fish, like just popping one into my mouth at a time. That would be a little, that'd be a little bit weird. Yeah, they're Pepperidge Farms goldfish. Yeah, they're one of my favorite snacks too, just because I, I'm basically a 12 year old. The snack that smiles back, right? Exactly. 
It's like some 1950s marketing right there. All right, see, you guys know. The bread and goldfish turn into cement in your teeth. That's why she has cavities. Yeah, that, that probably explains why I had cavities as a kid. That and that and just like I probably just didn't brush my teeth enough. You know, you gotta get, you gotta get that stuff out. If you got stuff stuck in your teeth, you gotta go get it out. As an adult, that's easy to like acknowledge. As as a kid, like you don't even think about it. You'll have food stuck in your teeth as a kid for like nine hours straight, and you'll pop some out and you'll eat it. You'll be like, oh, that was a snack I saved for later. As an adult, you get stuff stuck in your teeth, you're like, oh man, this shit's like super annoying, I better go take care of this. Del Madras. Rainbow goldfish? Rainbow goldfish seems like it's a food that is meant to change your poop into various colors. That's what rainbow goldfish makes me think of. Like, oh great, now I'm gonna have concerning bowel movements. I'm gonna forget that I ate these. I'm gonna examine my poo, as one does, for health reasons. Uh, and then I'm gonna find that it's multicolored and I'm gonna panic. I'm gonna have an anxiety attack. <laughs> oh, why is my poo green and blue and purple? What's wrong with me? My organs are failing! Yeah, that's what it reminds me of. It's still available. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> gross. I mean, uh, parts of life are gross. I'm either, uh, yeah, I'm either being gross on the stream or I'm being super rude to somebody. Like, it's gonna be something. You know, not, not everyone's gonna like the content they find here. Katie, good luck. Have a good rest of your day. You'll see yourself out. Make sure you leave a like on the way out, okay? I appreciate it. That's only if you eat Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops are like the All Berry Captain Crunch. You ever get the All Berry Captain Crunch? That that will do like terrible things to you. <laughs> Shikozu, Nenya, welcome to the stream, guys. Thanks for being here. We're talking about different foods that change the color of your poo. Yeah, that's that's the hot topic this morning. Mm -hmm. Just so you know. So if you're currently eating or that kind of talk just isn't your thing, then think again, I guess. 114 people watching and only 7 likes. Ooh! Oh, the algorithm, it hurts me. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, that's got to be a typo. Yeah, 7 likes is, seven likes has got to be a typo. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep trying to breathe. Explorer's vest, that looks pretty cool. It's because I don't ask for likes a lot. I ask for likes like at the end of the stream sometimes I remember to ask for likes, but like I don't talk about it. And I, and I found that if you don't talk about these things, people don't think about them. People are busy thinking about other stuff. You're late for the stream? You had to visit your grandson? Tell your grandson that I don't really appreciate that time cutting into my time. You let him know. We better we'll work out some better scheduling. I'm joking, obviously. Uh, I'm, a real, I'm a real jokester this morning.
if you guys want real numbers, there are there have been 33, 33 likes. So it's not as bad. It's not as bad as it's been portrayed. Up, upon a fact check, uh, we have 33 likes right now. So that's, you know, I appreciate each and every one of them. <laughs> He's too, but you'll tell him. Yeah, pass it along. <laughs> I'm sure he'll get the idea. Tell him to watch the stream. That's probably a bad idea. I would not, I would not advise that. Somebody, somebody told me in a YouTube comment that they, like, they would have their six-year-old watch my content. And I'm like, uh, like, I'm like, I appreciate where that's coming from, but I don't think all my content is, like, really great for kids. The recorded stuff's probably, like, kind of okay. But God, what's gonna happen is if you, if you put your six-year-old in front of some of my recorded stuff, the algorithm is gonna start playing the streams. And, like, you don't want your kid watching the streams because like 90 percent of the time it's going to be absolutely fine but then like 10 percent of the time it's not okay don't have your kids watch the stream not unless they're like 11 12 13 years old i, I click the button on youtube that says this content is not for people under the age of 18 so YouTube has a feature where on videos you can light up the like button at the moment when you say to hit the like button. That's like like visually prompting somebody to do it. That's interesting, but a little bit obtrusive. He likes the dragon on the Wrath Login screen. That's probably like the safest part of the content. Like before I'm speaking. Basically anytime before I'm speaking. After that, all bets are off. Yeah, Wolfheart, that's probably true, but I mean, like... Most people, like, don't even really think about parental controls that much. Like me, the way I control what my kid watches is we have a discussion about what he's watching, we subscribe to certain channels, and then I look at the history all the time. And then if there's anything questionable in the history, I watch that for a few minutes, and then maybe we have a little conversation about it. Ultimately, like, no, no app settings or, like, no corporation is going to be able to do anything to take the place of, like, the actual parental control. Like, as the parent, you are the, the parental control. You are the first, middle, and last line of defense between your kid and the internet. And it doesn't matter, you know, that somebody marked a video as being okay for kids. Like, it doesn't matter that you have parental control set on the device. Like, your awareness of what your kid is watching and doing is the only defense against them getting into stuff on the internet that you don't want them partaking in. And that's it. Basically, like, if you're not willing to watch a couple minutes of the of the videos and the creators that your kids are watching, like, if you're not going to turn on those creators for a few minutes, fast forward to a diff few different parts of the video, listen to how they talk, listen to what they talk about, like, if you're not going to do that, then you shouldn't have your kid on YouTube. With or without, like, a kid's profile or kid's settings. Uh, do I want to do anything else up here? I don't even- I don't- I don't remember why I came up here. I had a reason for coming up here. And then it just now- now it's lost upon me. Uh, let's go after the beach sea turtles. We can get the last two up here, and then we'll just bring those back. Uh, wait, the- the Cliff Spring River sample. See, that's what's throwing me off, is not having the quest tracking. I'm not as familiar with some of the Dark Shore quests. Yeah, I came up here primarily for the Cliff Spring River water. We'll get that, and we'll get the beach sea turtles. And then we'll move on. I'm fine with sticking a kid in front of a screen for parenting as long as you know what's on that screen. <laughs> like, if you have hours and time when, like, your kid is gonna be in front of a screen, that's fine. I'm fine with it. The world is full of screens. And, you know, they tell you you can't let your kid go outside and explore the neighborhood on their own anymore, that that's a crime now. So, like, I don't know. 
I I'm fine with people putting their kids in front of screens. I, I spent like some of my childhood in front of screens. I spent an equal part of my childhood out in the neighborhoods. But kids these days can't go run the neighborhoods the way that we could when we were kids uh, because parents can face like legal ramifications for letting their kids do that. So like I don't have anything against parents that put their kids in front of screens because I do the same kinds of shit. It, it's just like it's important to know what they're doing when they're on those screens and then how much time they're engaging in each screen related activity. That's all. Yeah, like as long as you're like cognizant of it, like you know they've been on there for X amount of time and you know the content that they're into, then it's fine. Now, if you're just putting them on there and you have no idea what they're doing, like, that's not okay. But it's more about awareness, because there's just, there's a smaller amount of things that kids can do these days by themselves. Just because, like, you know, it's not the 90s anymore. Kids don't, kids don't go outside into the neighborhoods that much. Kids don't even like to play outside that much because they don't have the freedom to go out into the neighborhoods. Like, nobody wants to just go play in their backyard for three hours. There's nothing to do back there, like... You can hunt some bugs and then step in a pile of dog poop and then that's pretty much it. Uh, where am I filling this up? I have no idea. Maybe I need to go all the way to the waterfall. Maybe that's what I'm doing. Let's try that. Yeah, now when, when, a, when a parent's not savvy with like YouTube, like they don't watch YouTube, they don't play video games, that's like the perfect storm for a kid that's going to get into all kinds of bad stuff. That's like the worst situation is where like neither parents or like the, the parent, the parent present is not like, is not a YouTube person, they're not a gaming person, but they're willing to put their kid onto YouTube and onto video games. See, to me, that, that's, that's the only thing that, that becomes, like, wrong at that point. Uh, this is not where we get the Cliff Spring River waterfall sample. That's, that's strange. I, I could have swore this was it. I'm gonna turn on tracking for a minute because I don't believe this. <laughs> Tracker, let's see. Mm, I don't even recall how to turn this on. Icons, maybe? Objectives. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not where it marks it. Oh, it marks it all the way back here. Okay, okay, so maybe there's just another... another waterfall. By the bridge. Yeah, I, I like to listen to the creators my kid watches to get a sense of, like, their tone. I, I like to get a feel for, like, the energy level that they speak with. I really hate people that speak with, like, a, a fake, super excited, super ecstatic, like, spastic tone. They just, like, go on and on and on, talking, like, super hyper and super... I hate that kind of shit. Because I, I think it encourages kids to be hyper and to talk just like that. So I, I listen for that kind of thing and just kind of make sure that like most of what he's listening to the people are a bit more chill and like just like a bit more normal than some of the people out there. Ultimately like at the end of the day like I, I have some problems with YouTube in the sense that like I don't know how I feel about like 20 year olds making like Minecraft content and shit that's like directly aimed at kids when they're not kids anymore and they don't have kids but they're making content that's going to be consumed by like millions and millions of kids. Like I think I, ha I have some like just deep conceptual problems with that. Um, Cause I think it's kind of just like exploitative, but I've got mostly I've gotten over that. Mostly now I just listen to make sure it's like a normal sounding person. You don't love every video starting with a guy screaming at you. No, no, not really. <laughs> it's not really my thing. Yeah, or like when they're all playing the game together and they're all screaming at each other simultaneously It's like the most horrible thing When that kind of shit comes on, I'm like no you can't you gotta you gotta find something else to watch Can't can't be doing that Oh 
All right, so, um, yeah, we, we could go get these turtles. Let's go get the turtles. And then I think we're going to head back. We'll go south and we'll fight the Pathfinders and the Wind Talkers. And then I think we're going to be done here for now. We'll be headed back over to Westfall. We'll also have to hit up Red Ridge at some point. Uh, we have a talent point to spend because we dinged at some point and I did not notice. So, grats me. Level 18. Go, go, go. One more point into Unbridled Wrath. And then after we put the next point here, I think... Maybe we'll go into Blood Craze? Um, other than that, we could grab Piercing Howl. We could grab Improved Battle Shot. Actually, we probably should just go Improved Battle Shot for five points. That seems really good. Eventually, we will train axes. I swear to God, once I go back, we're gonna... We'll make a stop. We'll make a stop in Iron Forge, and we will train axes. Absolutely. Yeah, see, Wolfhard doesn't doesn't really sound appropriate for kids. <laughs> Does doesn't really sound like super appropriate. <laughs> And kids will find stuff if, if you're not kind of guiding the creators they watch and like crafting that algorithm to, to show them stuff like that Like and you're not paying attention to it. Like it'll throw like off-the-wall things at kids sometimes You just you got to be mindful Always always be checking the history any creator that you don't know like go ahead and watch a few minutes of their content Just kind of listen for like their tone listen for like the kinds of language they use and stuff like that. It's really not very, like, labor-intensive. Unless you're someone who doesn't even, like, as an adult, if you don't watch any YouTube and you're not familiar with it and you don't, you don't care about it. That's, like, the, like, the most common excuse for, like, parents. They, like, say, oh, I don't care about video games. Okay, but your kid does. And he plays eight hours of them a, a day on the weekend, so maybe you should care a little bit. Maybe you should care enough to, like, put your hands on it for a few minutes. See what it is. Or, or maybe even just look at the screen a little bit while they're playing it and don't just try to like avert your eyes to what they're doing. That could work too. There we go. That's my, that's my parenting rant for this morning. I'll, I'll leave it there. We'll see what the internet thinks about my parenting techniques. I was so close. If I had stood like a couple of inches back, I probably would not have aggroed this guy.
would I play on a TBC server if they released one? It would depend on the timing and the context. Not that I ever see them doing anything like that. It, it would really depend on the timing that they put it out and the context under which they were doing it. Like, is it a hardcore server? Is it just like a vanilla BC server? Like, what's the point of it? I'm not, I'm not sure. I used to think I would do hardcore on a TPC server, and that, that would be fun, but I think my, my hardcore days might be behind me. So... <laughs> Wolfhard, that's a random question. I mean, obviously I would feel bad. <laughs> I, I wouldn't... I, I'd, I'd feel bad. If that happened, I would try to use 23% less energy. <laughs> Wait, Robert, that math doesn't work out. Oh, oh. That's what's going to happen in Canada? Well, I, if, if that were to happen, I would just have to like assume there was a, a need for it. Like, there would be a reason why. Ultimately, the reason for things like that is probably, like, scarcity. Like, you know, how much... How we can only we can only generate so much energy. <laughs> yeah, they, are, they, are, they are these things called, like, finite resources. We, we could have been a world that was uh, fueled by, like, all, like, nuclear power, but we decided because of propaganda that nuclear power was not safe and that it was better to keep doing things like burning fossil fuels and shit. So, you know, we basically got duped. Because of, like, a, a few things that happened, we were just convinced that, like, an actually safe form of energy was not safe, and so we did not, we did not, like, go that route across the board. So now energy costs more than it would otherwise. It's a price on pollution, yeah. The funny thing about putting a price on pollution is no matter how much you tax pollution, it doesn't get rid of pollution. Like, people are still going to use the energy they need to use. You're, you're not going to dissuade many people from doing it. And, and like, all things like that, it, it affects, like, the lowest income people the hardest. Which doesn't help anything either. What are you listening to? Social commentary. P parenting, parenting commentary, social commentary. You're listening to whatever I happen to be rambling about, I guess. Other than that, the, the pleasant, dulcet tones of Darkshore. Alright, let's go kill these furbolgs, and then we will be able to get out of here, we'll head back, we'll train axes, we'll get into Westfall, and we'll work on all this stuff. I feel like we have spent a lot of time in Darkshore.
if you run away when they cast their cyclone ability, it won't hit you. Oh. That's cool. That's kind of like the stone gaze ability that some of the basilisks have. Like, if you turn your back on it, it won't actually hit you. I will, uh, I will try to do that. That's good to know. Thank you. That's the great thing about the game is like you can play the game for 20 years and like me at least I'm learning new stuff all the time You were absolutely right. Yeah, once you get it must have a really short range I just assumed because it was a spell that it would hit me no matter what I never even thought to run away from it. That's really cool. Mike, good afternoon, man. It's going well so far. Thanks for stopping by. Alex, you were thinking of transferring some of your hardcore tunes to Classic Era? I mean, at this point, man, that's probably like a good idea, honestly. I I've been having a lot of fun just playing Classic Era. And like, I, I think I'm kind of like, I'm, s I'm like soft retired from hardcore. I ranged the fairy fire too. He didn't, I ran away from that fairy fire and he did not get the fairy fire off. I ranged him on it. It must be, they must have really short cast ranges. And that's- and that's not a bad idea. That is not a bad idea. Yeah, you got somebody to 60, so you're good. I- I just find that I- I don't know how much I care anymore. I- I just want to have fun and play the game. Yeah, like, and that's not to say, like, maybe one day they do, like, a fresh start server. Maybe one day they do, like, a fresh start event, and then maybe I would put my toes back in, but... As far as it being, like, something that I do all the time and do frequently, it's probably not going to be. Maybe, like, I'll see how I feel. Like, I'll get this character to 60, and then maybe I'll bring the 42 Hunter over here. I also already have, I have the 39 Paladin here, so like, I think I'd like to get this character to 60, I'd like to get the level 39 Paladin to 60, and after that maybe I'll start pulling over like other hardcore characters. Uh, let's see, I think we're good, let's go turn this one in, and then we should be ready to head back to the Eastern Kingdoms. Has there been anything new added to Classic after all the latest expansion releases? Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, the newest stuff that's been added to Classic is uh, Season of Discovery. Look up some info on Season of Discovery. A lot of changes, it's, it's like a seasonal mode of Classic Era with a bunch of class changes, a bunch of system changes, new dungeons, new raids, new PvP events. 
uh, soon new PvE events. And then, like, as far as other versions, like, in uh, Wrath of the Lich King, they added some harder difficulty modes for five-man dungeons. They're probably planning a bunch of changes for Cataclysm launch as well. What we're playing here is, like, vanilla, vanilla era. Classic era, classic, classic. Not classic plus, classic minus. What brings you here? Farewell. I'd like to see more people come back to Vanilla Era, like after Season of Discovery runs its course. And after the initial hype for uh, for Cataclysm wears off, which, you know, it will pretty quickly. I think after that, like after the season draws to a close, after Cata has been out for a little while, I think you'll see a lot of people coming back and just playing Classic Era. Alright, that's it. That's all of our green stuff. So let's go get on the boat. It's just hard to raise a sub, especially once you go a certain amount of time without raising it and you just kind of have like the player expectation is that it stays the same. Especially like a lot of the time you're trying, you're fighting to keep subs, you're fighting to like to get new subs and like the last thing you want to do is raise a subscription price, especially during times when you're struggling to maintain or build playership. Like, if they had adjusted the sub for inflation, the, the sub would probably be about $35 USD. Oh, we're not gonna make it! No! Oh, we were so close. If we had been a little closer, I could have stuck us to the side of the boat. But yeah, no, no such luck. The, the inflation hits the token instead. I mean, yeah, I guess. I don't know. I've, I've never, I haven't bought a token yet, so I haven't really engaged with that part of the game. I'll probably end up buying a token for Cataclysm though, because I'm, I'm dead broke. I got, I got no gold, and I know I'm gonna need at least some gold, so I'm kind, I'm probably screwed. Is the token a way to buy in-game gold? Yeah. Yeah, you, you buy a token with real-life money. This is, like, one way you can do it. It has, it has two sides of it. So, like, you could buy a token with real-life money, you put it on the auction house, and someone buys it for gold. And then you, you paid cash for the token, and you sold it to a player for gold. And then now you have gold. You're out, like, 25 bucks or however much the token cost you. But yeah, it's a uh, it's the official way to purchase gold because because another player is buying that token for their for the game time and they're paying you the gold for it. So you're purchasing game time and you're selling it on the auction house to somebody who wants to pay for their game time with gold. Yep, that's how it works. And it's only, it's not you know it's it's in it's in most versions of the game now. It's in Wrath, it's in Retail, it's not in Season of Discovery, and it's not in Vanilla Era. But both Wrath, slash Kata, and Retail, yeah, that you can buy a WoW token. Some people have lots of in-game gold, and they don't have any real-life money. Some people have lots of real life money, but they don't know how to make any in-game gold. So there's like there's like two different markets. That that's why it works. Cuz if you have millions and millions and millions of gold that you don't need, like you would rather just buy your game time with in-game gold. But if you're broke like me, you you don't have any gold. 
So in that case, you might be willing to spend some real life money to get some in-game gold from a player who wants to purchase their game time with gold. It's, it's a mutually beneficial transaction. Yeah, like if I had tons and tons of gold, I, I wouldn't pay for my sub with cash. I would just pay for it. I'd buy a, I'd buy a token off the auction house and pay for it with in-game gold if I could. Save myself the 15 bucks. Yep. In a world where people are going to buy gold no matter what if they want to, I would much rather people buy gold like officially by selling something to other players than to like go to a third party website and purchase gold illegally from like gold farmers, bots. I I'd rather there just be like uh, the official way to do it's better. Because at least when they're doing it the official way, like, two different players are benefiting. The player who buys the WoW token with gold is benefiting, and the player who sells the WoW token for gold is benefiting. So we have a, two people benefiting. Whereas when people are out there buying gold illegally, like, the gold sellers are benefiting. Like, one, one real player is benefiting because that player gets to buy some gold that they need. But then the only other person benefiting is the people selling gold illegally and running all the bots. So it's much better to have the WoW token, and then you have two players of the game that are benefiting. Not that it stops all botting, obviously. Botting is obviously always going to be a problem. Yeah, exactly, Alex. You can farm up your gold in retail where it's easier to farm up gold. And then that game time applies to, like, all versions of the game, obviously. Like, yeah, you're, you're not going to farm up your gold necessarily in Wrath Era. That, that might be a little bit harder. I, I, can't, I can't make gold in retail either. I can't even afford the transmog mount. I've been trying to save up gold to get the $150,000 like mount that allows you to transmog. Because I, I hate in retail like my transmog breaking every time I equip a new piece of gear. But I can't even afford that. So, yeah. Alright, so I am going to stop in Ironforge. I'm not going to forget. We're going to go train maces and axes. And get that done. Well met. Be careful.
Fight to meet you. See you soon. For some reason, I always remember the weapon trainer being in the outer ring. Like, right around here. But that's uh, obviously not the case. He's back here somewhere. Hey! I'm just going to train everything that I can here. Monica, good afternoon, good evening to you. Welcome to the stream. I have an axe that uh, that was gifted to me, so I'm gonna equip that. Level 17, which is perfect. Blood Moon, thank you again for the axe. That's gonna help out a lot. And now we're gonna jump on a flight. We have no axe skill, so we will have to find something to swing at for a little while, once we land. Alright guys, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna jump on a flight here uh, to Westfall, and I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. It'll probably be a little bit longer than the flight. My wife made me a tuna sandwich, so I think I'm gonna step away and actually eat this sandwich uh, up in the kitchen. So I'm gonna take like 10 minutes. The flight is going to be only five minutes, so yeah, I will be back in a little bit, and I would love to see you guys then.
All right, we are back. Thank you guys very much for hanging out. I appreciate it. Uh, let's go after the pillagers, the looters. It might have been smart to stop in Stormwind and pick up the quest for the pocket watch. That yeah, could have been a good idea. We'll have to come back for it at some point. It's fine. Uh, and then we'll also go after the Noel Pauls. <laughs> Full bags incoming. I have 20 empty slots right now. I'm hoping we can at least get the pillagers and the looters before my bags are full, but we'll see. Anything is possible. Hey, apparently, yeah, it's going to take us a minute to level up our axes. I'm going to level up axes on some of the wildlife. Before we actually start fighting guys that will kill us. Let's get all of our elixirs going as well.
All right, 70 out of 90 should be good. We'll get the rest of them while we fight. We're killing these guys actually pretty quickly. So let's head over to the Alexson Farmstead. We'll fight the Harvest Watchers. Uh, we'll fight everything around there. And we should be good. Do I find the warrior is hard and frustrating in Classic? No. Nope. It's, like, the best class to play in Classic. Nope, it's not hard to learn. It's really powerful. You can go from pull to pull without having a lot of downtime. You don't have to worry about stopping and drinking your mana back. You don't often have to worry about stopping and healing. Especially if you're doing your zone hopping and you're fighting, like, mainly green enemies. No, it's, like, the most powerful class in the game. Now, if you don't know how to play it, and you're not doing your zone hopping, then, you know, maybe it could be challenging, I don't know. No class in Classic is hard. Yeah, that, that's like kind of true. There is not really a class in Classic that's like super hard to learn or execute on. There are like subtle things about certain classes that if you don't know them, it can make playing the class really hard. Like take the Priest for example. Back in the day when I used to try to level up Priest, I didn't use a wand. I didn't know really about wands, I didn't really rely on wands. And so I just cast Smite, 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 Oom. And so, like, if you don't understand certain aspects of classes, they tend to be a, a lot more difficult. And not even difficult, but just, like, more tedious to play. Like, if you don't understand that you need to use wands as a priest, then you're going to spend a lot of time drinking your mana back. And it's not necessarily going to make the game hard, but it, it can be equated to difficulty because the game's going to feel more tedious to play. I did not want to aggro an additional caster. I did not. I didn't see her coming at all. I just completely stopped paying attention. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can die like I just died. Yeah, if if you're not paying attention, you're gonna you're like you're gonna die on everything. If if you're not if you're not planning your pulls or you're over pulling like I just did, then you're gonna die no matter what. Yeah, definitely. Like, you, I just got lit up because I wasn't paying attention, I pulled an extra caster, and now I'm dead. Yeah, like, part of it, part of the difficulty or the ease of a class is, like, you know, obviously planning your pulls or, like, not stumbling into other enemies, stuff like that. And also the other part of it is, like, doing your zone hopping and making sure that you're working on, like, green quests, fighting green enemies helps out a lot. If you're doing yellow quest and you're fighting at level enemies, then the amount of times you'll die is going to be, like, higher. But to be fair, like, in WoW, like, when you die, it's not always because, like, the content is hard. Usually when you die, it's because you made a mistake. Like, I made the mistake of pulling an extra caster. Like, it's not that it was hard, it's just that I messed up and I can't do that, and then we died. Like, that was it. And I don't think that's exactly, like, difficulty. Oh, 
also right now I'm playing with a weapon that is not fully leveled up, which if I really didn't want to get killed, I I wouldn't be I wouldn't be going at this with a with an underpowered weapon. 78 out of 90, not like a 100% chance to hit, so Yeah, the looters disarm. The disarm on the looters is almost as annoying as the fireball from the casters. Oh, I make mistakes constantly. <laughs> half of half of my gameplay is me making one mistake or another, depending on who you talk to. I really wish I could turn around and disarm them back when they, when they disarm me. But I bet to I bet even if I had the disarm ability, I bet you need to have a weapon for it to work. Will I be playing Kata? Yeah, once the pre-patch comes out, I'll play some more Kata. The beta is really, really buggy right now, so... I'm not gonna bother with the beta right now. I'm gonna wait until the pre-patch is out, and then we'll play some more. That's not gonna be until, like, the end of spring, so we have a little while. Kata was the worst expansion, it ruined the game in your opinion, you're allowed to have that opinion. As long as you understand that that's not an opinion that's widely shared among people. You can have whatever opinion you want. And the great thing is you can choose not to play the expansion and you still have other forms of WoW to play. Yeah, Blanton, I do agree that vanilla era is the best era. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that other versions of the game are not fun. I have fun in lots of different versions of the game. But for me, like, the most enjoyment, like, for having just, like, a chill time, leveling up, seeing the world, learning my class, like, the best place to do that has been in vanilla. 
I could argue that way. I'm not arguing that way. <laughs> I'm just saying that that's your opinion. You're entitled to it, but not everybody shares it. There are also a lot of people that are playing classic that have never seen Cataclysm. So it's not just about nostalgia for everybody. A lot of people started playing a while like later on in its life. And so for a lot of people getting to see like Burning Crusade, getting to see the Lich King, getting to see the Cataclysm, for a lot of people it's it's their first time. So they don't have like a preconceived opinion about the content. Right, and you can't you can't look at historical numbers to really inform anything that's going to happen currently. Like I said, because so many people didn't play during Cataclysm that are playing Classic now. Either way, you're, you're entitled to your opinion. You're just not entitled for your opinion to apply to anybody else but yourself. That's basically it. With WoW, if you if you ask three different people what was their least favorite expansion, you will get three different answers. If you ask somebody, in your opinion, what do you think killed WoW, you will get three different answers. Everybody has their own opinions and their own experiences about these things. Sometimes they overlap, but none of them unilaterally apply to everybody. That's how humans work. We're all we're all different. Yeah, my least favorite expansion was Shadowlands, but I, I still played some in Shadowlands, so... Yep. And then even with not really liking Shadowlands, I still like- I liked Patch 9.2 a lot. I thought the zone was really cool, I thought it was fun to play, I thought the stories there were okay, I thought the art was amazing, so even within an expansion that I thought, like, this is the worst expansion I've ever played, I still really liked Patch 9.2. Now, every zone still had a story in Kata, it's just that sometimes that story changed a little bit. You can agree with one thing I said, but it doesn't make something else that you say true. Yeah, the zone still had stories. Those stories were all just slightly different. The zones always have stories, it's just that by like Warlords of Draenor, by Legion, there was more of a focus on the A plot. That was that was my point about that, in that rant, you, you, maybe you missed it. But my point was that after, after a certain point in expansions, they really started to, to focus on telling an A plot. There were still zone stories and still like unique stuff going on in the zones, but the story focus shifted towards like following certain characters around and bigger events happening in the world and big cinematic moments. That's all. The zone still had stories, it just wasn't the only focus for storytelling anymore. Robert, you just read that uh, season of uh, Phase 3 of Sod is in 19 days. Phase 3 of Sod is next Thursday. <laughs> that's I think that's less than 19 days. Yeah, it's um it's next Thursday. Let me let me double check. Yeah, it's on the 4th. So 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 days. You got 9 days till uh till Phase 3. Yeah, there's a big video they put up yesterday. The cool thing is, like, I, I put my video about my thoughts for, like, phase one and two up. 
And then like three hours later, they had their video up about like the content coming in phase three. And interestingly, a lot of the stuff that I want is actually going to exist in phase three. Now, will, will the content be good? I don't know. But one of my biggest wants was like, I wanted PVE content for solo players that was not raids, that was not PVP. And they're introducing this uh, this new system of like you jump through a portal and you go through the portal and there's like mobs to fight and stuff to do on the other side of the portal. And there's four portals in different places in the world. And that's giving like solo players at all levels, like from level 20 up, a chance to go through these portals, to, to gain experience, to gain reputation with a new faction. And they said you'll even be able to do that stuff at, at level cap, so... It'll hopefully be another thing for solo players to do at the level cap that's not raiding, that's not the PvP event. Also, thank god they didn't make up a new PvP event, so they're sticking with the Stranglethorn event, which is a good idea. They're adding dual spec. Dual spec is getting added in phase 3, like it's, it's a perfect time for dual spec. Since they're having like that, that solo player PvE outdoor content with the portals they're putting in, it, it'll be nice to have a soloing build and then like a raiding or a dungeon build. I'll be able to make my pally into a tank and a DPS, so that's like super exciting. I'm looking forward to dual spec a lot. The Emerald Dream Corruptions. Yeah, yeah, you, there's the four Emerald Dream portals you go through and you fight the corrupted enemies on the other side. I'm assuming like maybe it'll just be a mob grind, but I'm kind of assuming maybe there will be daily quests there. Maybe there will even be like world quests there. Maybe there will be just like events that play out. Or maybe it'll just be a straight up enemy grind with some regular enemies, some elites. But they said it was going to be like repeatable content. So like any any solo player like re PVE repeatable content in the season to me is good. If it can give somebody a reason to log on to their character between raids, then I'm all about it. Because so far there there really hasn't been a big reason to uh to have a main character that you log in every day if you're not going to do the PVP event and if you're not raiding. I just realized that I never got all the handfuls of oats. Oh my god. I'm lucky that one hasn't gone gray yet. What's gonna happen to sod characters when the season ends? They've hinted that there will be a, they said there will be an interesting place for them to go. What does that mean? To me, it means they don't know yet. To me, it means they don't know yet, but they're they're trying to work on it and figure it out. They said there will be an interesting place for them to go once the season ends. So I have no I have no idea what that means, but it'll be something. But the the thing is, like, are you gonna play a lot of your character once the season ends? Uh, maybe. I guess the answer to that really depends on if they're going to do more seasons, and if they're going to do more seasons, are they going to be two years apart, like how we had to wait for two years between Season of Mastery basically being over before we heard about Sod? Like, I don't think seasons that are two years apart are very, like, compelling, constant content for people, so we'll see what they do. They might open up just a sod era realm. Yeah, just like a, just a realm that stays up forever, like something like that, I guess. That would be the easiest thing to do, right? Just keep one one realm up per region? I, I don't know, because like how would you handle it? Some people want PvP realm, some people want a PvE realm. I don't really know how. You'd have to have at least two, I guess. You, I don't think that's a good precedent to set, personally. You know, eventually the Season of Mastery realms shut down. The Season of Mastery realms don't exist anymore, so you, you had to transfer those characters off. I don't think it's a good precedent to set that a season comes out, and then they keep a static realm of it around forever. You're gonna have to maintenance that realm, that's gonna split the player base up. Eventually, it's, it's probably gonna be a dead realm eventually, like... I, I hope that's not really the plan. Cause that, and that's also not sustainable. If, if you want to do multiple seasons, you, you can't do a season and then for every season you do, keep multiple servers open for people that want to stay in that era. Like, I don't think that's a good idea.
I, I think that the important thing about a season is that the season comes, the season goes, and the season ends. Um, and then, you know, that's it. Season's over. That's what I always expected. What I expected was that you'd be able to send your character over to a regular vanilla realm. But obviously you're not going to have all the cool spells and all the stuff that you had. And I guess the reason why they can't do that is because there's no way to square the gear power. Like, if you get a bunch of gear in Sod, and then the season ends, and then you send that Sod character to a, to a vanilla realm, even if you take away all the abilities, they still have all this new gear that they've made up all this gear. So yeah, you can't even let those characters go into a classic era, because with the gear they have, they're going to be much more powerful than, than classic era characters. So, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they painted themselves into a little bit of a corner. <laughs> We'll see. Yeah, the gear would be messed up. Yeah, I, I don't know what they'll do. Like I said, I, I don't know that they know yet. They probably will have to do something like keep a static server open, but again, if they do that and they set a precedent for that, it means that every time they do a season going forward, they're going to have to keep a server open for it afterwards. And that's going to grossly limit, like, how many seasons they want to do. have them reborn in the classic era at the same level but with no gear you'd have if you wanted to plop them in the classic era yeah you'd have to take away all the gear yeah like no no matter what happens like people are not going to be happy with it <laughs> that's kind of the sad realization is like no matter how they choose to handle the sod characters there are going to be people that are not happy about it even if they keep a sod server open till the end of time, I, I personally don't like that idea. So I'm not going to be happy if they do that. Because I don't think that we need any more permanent different versions to play the game. I think there are already lots of different ways to play the game. I think that the player base is already pretty darn divided as to how they enjoy the game the most. And I think that leaving up permanent ways to further split the player base is a bad idea long term. So, you know, some people will be happy to have a permanent sod server. I am a person that would not really like that. It doesn't really negatively impact me, I guess, but it could. Because I would love to see people start coming back to vanilla era. But if they were to leave a permanent sod server open, it decreases the likelihood that people will find their way back to regular classic era. Which is a bad thing for me, because I would love to spend the majority of my time here. Yeah, I, I would be fine with the characters living and dying on that server. I, I get that people don't want to have a sense of, Oh, I did this all for nothing. My character gets deleted. You mean I played this game for nothing? No, you, you, you played the game for the enjoyment of playing the video game. You were never going to get anything uh, for your character still existing anyway. Maybe they'll just have a big lobby where people can log in and just like stand around with their sod characters and duel each other or something. Will they continue sod into TBC? No, no, I don't know. That's not, no. Uh, that was never the plan. It, it's, it's a classic era season, so... It's just, it's going to stay 1 to 60. It's going to end at 60. 60 is the end level cap for Sod. 
it would be cool if in the future maybe they do seasons in different eras you know it would be cool to see a, a season of tbc that would be cool but that'd be something different if you're talking about the cataclysm beta torn warrior no no that was a beta character and the beta is really really buggy right now But, you know, rejoice, because instead of the Cataclysm Beta Warrior, you have the best warrior, which is the Vanilla Era Warrior. So, we're good. <laughs> the season of Wad, just so I can say Wad more. And make my wife uncomfortable. Season of Wad. Wad, Wad, Wad. Let, let's make it easy and say that the only warrior that I'm going to be playing any time in the foreseeable future is going to be this character. That will be the only warrior that I play in the foreseeable future. Eventually for Cataclysm, I'm going to have a Blood Elf warrior to take into Cata. But I already have a Blood Elf Paladin, and like right now, I, I can't level a Blood Elf warrior because Blood Elves can't be warriors. But no, this is what we're doing for the time being. We are going to play this character. We are going to check out season or phase three of Sod. And we'll get to level 50 in Sod. And then we'll be right back here doing this. And then we're just waiting for the Cataclysm pre patch to come out. I haven't touched my Tauren Wrath Warrior in like seven or eight months. No, I, re I retired that character a long time ago. The biggest reason that character died was because at the time there was no there was no looking for group tool. And so I couldn't get into any dungeons as a DPS warrior. Nobody wanted to invite me. And then the couple of times that I got into a group on that character, I would get invited to a group and then everyone in the group would be like, "So, what do we want to do?" So, uh, what do you what do you guys want to run? And it was like trying to decide what to have for dinner with like your spouse or your girlfriend or your boyfriend. You go like, hey, what do you want to eat? Oh, uh, I don't mind. I'll eat anything. What do you want to eat? Uh, you know, I don't know. I'm kind of hungry, but I, I could really go for anything. What do you want to eat? And I was like, I'm not having the fucking what do you want to eat conversation trying to do a five man in a video game. Like, I want to put myself in a queue. I want to list myself. I want to get invited automatically and be teleported to the dungeon. So, like, the biggest reason why that character went away is because at that time we didn't have Looking for Dungeon. And I was getting sick of A, not getting invited as a DPS warrior, and B, having to have the what, what are we eating conversation just to figure out what dungeon we were going to run whenever I did get invited to a group. Nobody even knew what they wanted to do. It was crazy. You could tell they were, everyone was ready just to have the automated tool. But it was, it was months and months and months after that before they finally gave it to us. So yeah, that character just got retired. And, and I kind of decided that I hated the Torrent moving animations. Torrents like tend to look like they're running through water, running through molasses when they move. Very cumbersome. That was exactly what the conversation was like, and it happened It happened multiple times. It wasn't just a one-off. It was multiple groups I got invited to where no one seemed to know or care what, they want, what we wanted to do. No one wanted to be responsible for deciding what the group would run. Nobody really cared what the group would run. It was, it was really something special. It was like people got so ambivalent. How do I communicate so well? 
I, I've had lots of experience talking. I've been doing it for like 38 years. I'm not really sure. Uh, I was a training developer and a classroom facilitator. So as far as like cadence, tone, enunciation, I guess I picked up most of my abilities teaching classes. Like in-person classes to real life adults. But as far as just like communicating with people, I've been doing that for like, since I was two, so about 38 years of experience. Gray Legs, good afternoon buddy, welcome to the stream. I appreciate that, I don't really see it as skill. I, I just see it as a dude talking about stuff. But I appreciate that. Jerome, good afternoon, buddy. Welcome to the stream. Uh, we are done here. We've we've killed everybody. We've killed everything. Let's head over a little bit further to the west. And we'll go after the null paws. And then we're going to be done with all the green quests here. And then maybe we will head over to uh, Lock Madon again. We've got level 15 stuff. Have I done the lighthouse quest yet? No, not yet. We're probably ready to do like the murloc one for the most part. I, al I always wait. Uh, I always wait and then like I end up having to do it in a weird order and then I fight the guys up to the north and they're all gray and they're not worth any XP. Maybe I should grab the quest now and like do it later. That way when I do the murloc kill quest I can start up here and I can work my way down one time. As opposed to starting over here, or working my way up the coast, and then having to turn around and run all the way back down to turn it in. Maybe I should grab it. That being said, it's far away. But yeah, let's maybe head that way. Some people don't have the ability to frame sentences so quickly. Yeah, I guess. I guess when you, when you talk about like how... Like being able to facilitate conversations and being able to interact with people... I, I, those things come from learning how to facilitate classrooms. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's it's much easier to do so in this forum than to have a, an actual classroom of physical people. Like, because then, you know, you have to be, like, on the move often. Uh, you have to be a little bit more animated with, like, your body and your posture. So this is much easier than teaching classes. I just kind of got lucky that a lot of the things that I'd already done in my life made it easier for me to, to, to do this. But then again, had I not had the experiences of those other things in my life, I probably would never have thought to try to do this. And when I started the channel, I wasn't streaming. I've only been streaming for like the past 10 months. Uh, prior to that, it was all just recorded content.
if I had tried to do this kind of thing before I had facilitated classes, I probably would not have even had the skills to like enjoy doing it. It probably would have felt very laborious and very challenging. So I guess from that perspective, I understand what you mean. Blitzen Jr., good afternoon. Welcome to the stream, buddy. You quit WoW forever, sadly. That is sad, but I'm glad you're here hanging out. I appreciate you being here. What would be my best my advice to someone who wants to start streaming? Uh, it's a tough one because I just kind of got into it uh, b after like doing the recorded stuff for a while. Like I never thought like, hey, I should jump right into being a streamer. I never thought that I would stream. I didn't think I wanted to after teaching classes for so long. I, I didn't know that if I wanted uh, that level of interaction. So it, it kind of grew on me. It wasn't something that I really set out to do. I set out to do recorded stuff. But when it comes to just doing YouTube content, like my only real advice is simply to start doing it. Uh, the worst thing you could do is to wait and say, oh, I gotta have the perfect PC, I need the perfect microphone, I need the perfect setup, I need the perfect soundboard. Like, the worst thing you can do is to make up reasons why you're not yet ready to start. Uh, the best thing you can do is take whatever equipment you have, whatever equipment you can muster, and start. And then try to be consistent with it. Whether you're gonna upload once a day, whether you're gonna stream three times a week. Like, trying to be consistent with what you do. But mainly just starting to do it seems to be people's like biggest hang up. I, I had a buddy who wanted to get into doing it, like, and we did a couple of streams together on Twitch. We did Dauntless, a couple other things, but like ultimately, like he kept having reasons why he wasn't ready to really start up a YouTube channel. Like, he he wanted to have better equipment, then he needed to have a better microphone, then he wasn't sure what kind of content he really wanted to make. And it was just like one one hesitation after another resulted in him never doing it. <laughs> you're gonna need a PC. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna need a PC. Right, 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 right. You're gonna need the basic equipment. But don't don't like fret too much about like having everything be perfect, especially when you're first starting out. Because when you're first starting out, nobody's watching. <laughs> nobody's watching when you're first starting out. It doesn't matter. Just start getting into the habit. What you're doing when you're starting out is you're you're building good habits. You're getting comfortable with things that you haven't been comfortable with, and you're learning. And you have to do all that long before you're going to have, like, an audience. Also, playing a game that you're familiar with, if you're going to do game content, like, doing something you're familiar with, at least to start, is very helpful. And obviously, like, play something you love. Ooh, we have all the, the flame oil. Well, that's nice. Our inventory is full, though. That's less nice. Very much not as nice. Yeah, I feel like it's. I feel like as far as how much a person interacts with their chat, I feel like that's like a personal choice. I feel like it's a content choice. Like, you can be a person that doesn't interact a lot, but whatever you decide to do, it, it kind of helps to be consistent with that choice. You know, if, if you feel like it's better for your content to have less chat interaction, then do that and stick to it. If you're going to have a lot of chat interaction, then kind of then do it that way. But I think it's different for different content and different, different people. Uh, what else am I going to throw on the ground here? I don't know. Let's let's pop this one. We'll pop the last of our elixirs here. That'll open up a little bit of space. Uh, aside from that, there's not really a lot we can do. There's a fisherman vendor on the pier. Thank you, Jason. Yes. You're right. That's, that's awesome. Thank you for the reminder. Sometimes chat goes so fast the streamer can't directly interact. If you're like a big streamer, yeah, yeah. 
Sure. I, I'm like, my chat doesn't move that fast, thankfully. <laughs> I appreciate all you guys. I'm glad that my chat moves, but that it doesn't move like super fast. I like being able to at least try to read everything, even if I can't or won't respond to everything. I, I like being able to at least read what's going on. It would be difficult for me to function well in an environment where chat moves so fast that I couldn't at least read everything. So I, I do like to scan stuff even if I can't reply to everything. I'm gonna hang on to the hops, or at least I'm gonna try to. I don't think I need the okra anymore. We did the okra quest already. I'm gonna sell that. I'm gonna sell the intellect scroll. We don't really need, need that anymore. Uh, anything else? I think everything else we have to keep. See you later. I try to welcome everybody. You know, there are sometimes I miss people, and also I've had to allow for the fact that, like, someday. You know, if if I'm if I continue doing what I'm doing, if we grow the community, there might be a day when I can't personally welcome everybody. So it's been like a precedent that I've tried to set with the expectation of myself that like there may be a day. It's like a double-edged sword. Like you know, you you'd love to grow a community to a point where like you literally can't welcome everybody personally, but at the same time, it's kind of a bummer when you can't do that. The thing is, Grey Legs, I bet it's awkward for some people to, to have, like, one or two viewers and to, like, have that level of, like, intimate interaction with them, you know what I mean? It, especially if they're not, like, super experienced at, like, having those conversations, because you don't know what someone's going to say to you. And if you've never been in a position in your life where you've had to facilitate conversations or lead meetings or teach classes or give presentations with Q&As, like, if you've never done any of that stuff... I can see how a person would be, like, hesitant to engage. With one or two people, that's a very intimate audience, and if you're not used to it, then it could probably make a person uncomfortable. I, I kind of get it, you know what I mean? Like, I can interact with one or two people. Oft often I'm like, often we have, like, one or two people that are very verbal, and I'm, like, having a conversation with only a couple of people, and I'm fine with that. But yeah, it's, a, it's about what, what you've experienced in your life and the kinds of stuff you've had experience with. That's going to determine, like, how comfortable you are, like, having those conversations. <laughs> because people can say anything. <laughs> people can say literally anything. And if you're not used to that idea, then it can be very hard to want to engage. Alright, so what do we want to do now? We, we go turn everything in, and then maybe we head to Loch Modan. And we take care of some- we, maybe we head over to the Hunter's Camp over on the eastern side of the zone. We ha we want to finish this one first, though, before we head over to the east, I think. They might even say that Kata is a bad expansion, and then you have to deal with that. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, they can say anything. It's like sta yeah, having one or two people is like standing in a small elevator with a stranger. Yeah. You do a weird nod. Nowadays, people just look at their phone and pretend to be on their phone. Like, a lot of times in a, in a small elevator with strangers, like, you don't have to do a lot. 
if it's the elevator at work, if you like work at a corporate office and you're on the elevator, then yeah, you have to at least give like a little nod. And then you go back to looking at your phone. You can't really do that on a stream, but you can just go back to looking at the game, you know? Yeah, it's just experience public speaking. That's really like, that's one of the key skills that you really want to have. Like, if you have experience like public speaking or maybe at work you've like led meetings, or things like that, then you're going to have an edge on doing this over somebody who's never done it. It's just going to be a natural edge if you already have that skill. Now, if you don't have that skill, you can develop it. But it is a skill that takes... You, you have to do it to develop it. When I first started teaching classes, this is not how I spoke to people. Like, I could not do this 10 years ago. It, it took time and working with that skill set and developing it before I, I, I felt comfortable doing stuff like this. And a lot of people don't get to have that experience. It depends on like how your life plays out, what your, what your job is, and all that. Am I going to do Dead Minds? I don't know if I'll do it today. I'd like to do it eventually. Um, when I look at who's looking for groups, I don't see anybody looking for Dead Minds right now. So that's a thing. It might be challenging. I might I might have to try to like start a group once I get like a shield and a one-hander. I think I might have to start the group. If I really want to do dungeons, I'm probably going to have to put it together myself. Yeah, I feel like anybody can learn how. I, I, trained, I trained a lot of trainers, like that was a part of my job, <clears throat> was not just to make the materials and train the associates, but I trained trainers. And when we started training a trainer, they would come with whatever their past experience was, and they would come with whatever innate skills they had, and then we'd kind of coach them and give them advice on how to do different things. Some people talk too fast, some people talk too slow, some people don't think well on their feet, uh, but anybody can improve those things. Need help? But you really, you have to actually do it to improve on it. It's not something you can study, it's not something you can think about, it's, it's something where you have to do it, and then you have to get feedback, and then you have to adjust what you're doing, and then you have to get more feedback, Be careful. and you're constantly learning, and you're constantly changing like how you do things. For the Alliance. You're, it's always a work in progress. Hey there. But you have to work at it to make progress. And like I said, not everybody has that opportunity in their daily life. Have a good one. Most people, like, after you leave school, most people are never put in a position where they have to articulate complex ideas. Or where they have to interact in free-form discussions with people who are not their friends. Like, most people, like, a lot of people don't end up in those positions in life. And the ones that do, like, not many of those people choose to go into streaming or YouTube content. A lot of those people tend to go into other, other, other careers, other lines of work. Uh, let's go get this stuff turned in. We finally have enough to feed old Blanche. So, before we bail out of here, let's go do that. Old Blanche's been starving. He's wanted those oats for a long time. We've been slacking off. What graphics card am I using? I'm using a 3080. So, you know, middle middle of the road at this point. But you know, you can you can run World of Warcraft classic on like a toaster oven connected to two potatoes. King's honor, friend. So, you know, like a 3080 is more than sufficient for, for classic. Bless 
as some people even say the F word in every sentence. I have moments. I have my moments. <laughs> Sometimes I drop a lot of F-bombs. It depends on what I'm talking about. When, when, I use, when I use foul language, it's very purposeful. And it's, it's to add emphasis to the emotions that I'm trying to convey. Yeah, I, I, even when I'm dropping F-bombs a lot, it's always very tactical. Because I feel like profanity does have a place, but profanity should be should be used in an extreme situation where you're trying to express like an extreme like feeling of something very important to you, or maybe you're trying to express it in kind of a jarring or shocking way to get people to really think about it more. I feel like profanity has a place in language. It, it, it falls over a little bit when it's overused, but I, I utilize it regularly. I don't know if I've dropped any f bombs today. But it wouldn't surprise me. See you around. See you later. Ask my wife, I have nothing against using foul language to express myself. I, I, I sometimes limit it here, but not, not if I'm really on about something. Alright, I guess we can run, we could either run back to Sentinel Hill, or we could just make the run to Stormwind. I feel like the run back to Sentinel Hill and the flight point is going to be a little bit faster. I don't know if we gain anything by running all the way to Stormwind. Yeah, when I play WoW on this rig, the only time I have slowdowns is in Veldraken. Whenever I go to Veldraken. And all I do, like, when I go to Veldraken, I turn my shadows down a little bit. And that tends to alleviate most of my issues. And, and I feel like, you know, I guess there, there probably are some rigs that can run Veldraken at 60 FPS, but... Once you stack that many players in a small area, like, running around and doing stuff, it, it gets a little... a little intense. Where's my Hearthstone set? Good question. Uh, the Thunder Brew Distillery. Thunder Brew... Is Thunder Brew in uh, Dunmoro? Or is Thunder Brew in Loch Modan? I don't know which one's which. I don't know if this is Karanos or Thelsimar. Yeah, I don't I don't know where that is. Hmm. This is in Karanos. Okay, yeah, that's not gonna help me. That gets me closer, but then I still have to do a run, so I'm just gonna throw myself on a flight point, I think. I, th I think that's the best option. Admirals, you didn't have to do that, man. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Unnecessary, but I appreciate it, man. Thank you. You're quite sure I'm not an AI. You don't, you know, I might not be. But I might be like an android or something. Even if I was an AI, I can still be real. L let's get real. <laughs> AIs are almost real anyway. Hello. Uh, let's see. That's gonna be a six minute flight. That's not- that's not bad. Is this where I want to go? Do I have anything outstanding anywhere else that needs to be done first? I didn't grab the compass. I didn't think I had this quest. I- I thought we didn't have this quest. Let's go grab the compass really fast and we'll get that turned in. You know, I was expecting to see it in my- in my Westfall tab, but it's not in my Westfall tab, it's in my Stormwind tab. Yep, let's go do that. Is there a dungeon around here? Absolutely. Yeah, there's Dead Mines. Dead Mines is uh, down here by Moonbrook. I didn't do the treasure map yet. I might, I might do the treasure map later on. The treasure map is what, level 16? 
it's, it's a level 16 and we're gonna have to come back here so I'll do it when we come back to finish up the rest of the Defias. I'm not even sure though where to pick up the treasure map though. Is it just like on the ground? There's a couple of different markers. It's marked all over the place. Treasure map, treasure map. I guess I'm not like 100% sure on how it started. It drops off of Murlocs randomly. Oh, okay. I, I didn't know that. So I guess we'll we'll work on it once I'm fighting Murlocs, if we happen to get the item. So yeah, when we come back here. We'll do all the green stuff in Lock Madame. And then we'll probably have to head back to Darkshore and then we'll head we'll you know, we'll keep doing a circuit of green quest until we've got everything done in Darkshore, Lock Modan, and Westfall. At some point I'll have to pop into Red Ridge. Red Ridge has a couple of like level 15, level 16 quests that uh, I don't want to lose. We have plenty of time right now. But at some point I will have to jump over there. We'll do Hillary's Necklace, Lost Tools. And I think one of the Knoll quests is a lower level quest. Yeah, my philosophy for vanilla air is basically always be out leveled as much as you can like especially early on like always be a higher level than what you're fighting it makes everything so much smoother so much more enjoyable when you're not struggling against like higher level enemies See, one thing I need to work on that I don't have skills for is that I need to like work on my thumbnail game. My thumbnails are boring <laughs> and, and I wish I knew like a way that I could make them more interesting that actually was like good for me. Because yeah, my thumbnails are all just kind of lame.
Like, I want you to take me on my first raid. <laughs> Someone needs to take me on a raid. We had a guild in Wrath for a little while, but it was during a time when I wasn't really playing a lot of Wrath. And so the only raids that I've done in Wrath were a couple of pugs. I pugged Nax a couple times, I pugged, uh, I pugged Uluar once. My Uluar pug, I didn't even record it. I ended up having to get into, uh, into somebody's Discord. They were all very active in their Discord, very vocal. Hello. Which was okay, they seemed like okay people, but they had a lot of, like, inside jokes and stuff going on. So, like, my one Uluar run, I didn't even get to make a video out of it. Because I, I didn't have time to set it up so I could separate the Discord audio from, like, my audio. I'm hoping to, uh, I'm hoping to do more raiding in Cataclysm, but we'll see how that goes. At the end of the day, something I've acknowledged about myself is that I'm, I'm not much of an endgame player these days. I was, an, I was a big endgame player when Wrath was originally out. Wrath was probably the time in my life when I raided the most. Like, original Wrath. A pug? Yeah, a pug, which is P-U-G. As opposed to a pog. Which I think used to be like these little cardboard, like, discs that you'd, you'd slam the- you'd stack them, and then you'd slam them with like a metal thing, and then they'd fly all over, and whichever ones landed a certain way, those would be your points. You guys remember pogs? Like, as a toy? You'd collect- they were like little cardboard discs with like art on them. And like, the game somehow worked that you stacked your pogs, and then you had a slammer that you'd like slam down onto the top of them. They'd fly everywhere. Question mark, question mark, question mark... Profit. Probably no one remembers these things. <laughs> I'm gonna have to double check now if they were even real. Or if I've like fabricated the part of my childhood. Yeah, in tubes. Yes, Jerome. Yeah, you stored them in tubes. Yes. It's funny, we stored them in tubes to protect them, but then we'd slam a metal slammer down on top of them to make them fly all over the place. Such a weird thing to be into. Good day to you. <laughs> question mark, question mark, question mark. Yeah. I feel like mainly they were to collect, and then when you'd go to play, like, the gameplay of it was, like, kind of questionable. Safe trap. Pogs are very real. Good, good, good. Because I, I think pog means something else today in internet speak. That has nothing to do with, uh, with the game that I played as a kid. And so when people use internet speak, like, poggers and stuff, like, I get confused. Because I just think of, like, the little cardboard discs that I had when I was a kid. The first time you heard your daughter say Pog, you were really confused. Yeah, I'm, st I'm still confused about it. I still don't know. <laughs> I, I, I could just look it up and find out. There's a, there's a lot of internet speak that I don't really know. Have they broke your washing machine? Oh no. That's not good. It means play of game. Yeah, I, I had deduced that it was positive. I like to I like to not know these things. And I like to try to figure out from like context clues if it's a positive thing or if it's like a negative thing. And so like on the on, on poggers, like I came down on the side of it, it seemed like a positive thing, but I never really felt compelled to like really look it up. <laughs> play of game. Oh. But it, I feel like sometimes it's delivered facetiously. Like, you fall down an elevator shaft and someone says, Poggers. Like, it's- I guess it's also delivered facetiously, or that it can be. I see, I, for someone that talks a lot on the internet, like, I don't know these things about internet speak. I can usually just deduce what it means and what it implies through context clues. Whenever Twitch streamers say poggers, they actually mean pogs now. Yeah, like just change it. Like, oh, you're talking about pogs. No, not at all. I, 
I've accepted that eventually language will get away from me and that like I won't know what anyone's talking about. If I live long enough, most common language will escape me I do for you? and I won't know what anybody on the internet is talking about. Have a good one. See you later. That's reality. Uh, let's do a little gear check. We can check the auction house. Uh, I have level 11, level 10, level 10, level 11, level 10. Maybe we can upgrade some of our gear. Le I don't want to spend too much money, but let's have a little look. Let's do a little bit of shopping. Uh, Jerome, your grandma's 93. If language is the only thing that escapes me by then, then I'm good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that that's fair, yeah. I don't think I'll make it that long. Uh, but yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I doubt I'm gonna find any shoulders. Let's look for chests. We're gonna look for like anywhere between 16 and 18, I think would be good. Okay, we got some stuff. Oh, we got of the bear uh, for under a gold. Yeah, I think I'll definitely take that. Let's check for a belt. Of the bear for 10 silver. Oh, this is a steal. Look at that. I, I'm ripping this person off. Legs. Of the bear for a gold and 30 silver. That's a little bit expensive, but I think I might grab it anyway. Um, anything else? Burnished leggings. Bronze leggings. Let's go with the bear stuff. Eat. Oh, damn. No, I, I don't want to spend 60 gold. Of the gorilla or of the tiger? I think I'm just going to keep what I have. Yeah, I have raider's boots of the bear. That's going to benefit me more. Uh, stamina on the wrist. I would rather just not spend the money and keep the attack power. Against 80, 80 gold for a low level item. Oh, that's crazy. 15 gold for of the bear level 18. I will pass on that. Uh, and then hand wraps of power. This might be better. I'm just going to keep what I have. Yeah, that's a little bit pricey for me. Uh, and then that's it. We just, we just got an axe, so I don't think I need a weapon right now. I, I think my weapon is okay. It's pretty good. Yeah, I, I feel like that's level 17. I feel like this is fine for now. The wrench me <laughs> yeah, exactly, Monica. The wrench means that they're moderators. Yeah. They they have the ability to swing the ban hammer. Mm-hmm. All right, that is our new look. That actually looks really nice. That goes really well together. That all matches. Somehow we, we match, except for the boots and the gloves. But yeah, that's awesome. I'll take it. All right, guys, I am out of time for today. I've had an awesome time. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me and tolerating me playing Classic Era. I'm really excited for this to continue. We'll play a little bit of Sod when Sod comes out, but I, I do I do plan to keep the focus on this character until we get her to 60. So that is the plan. Thank you for being here for it. If you had a good time leaving a like, making sure you're subbed to the channel, ringing the bell, all that stuff really does help me out a lot, and I really appreciate those that do. Until next time, take care of yourselves out there in the real world and take care of each other, and we will see you back in Azeroth again very soon. Bye for now.